Your world revolved around the playground. There were kids out here in the freezing cold shooting free throws in the dead of winter simply because they want their game to be tight once the spring weather wraps around. Basketball was pretty much life and death, literally. I grew up in the, in the era of crack and drugs and crime, so the basketball court was like a safe haven. Basketball courts are really, can be very important in the development of a young person, especially when they have that, that multi-generational play going on. You develop, I think, a whole host of life skills playing on these courts. You know, it's not an easy game. You have to really earn your stripes and your respect. What's going on, How sir? How you doing, man? Good. Man. Likewise, man. Everything good? good? See you, man. I'm here, man. No doubt, brother. All right, man. Okay. Conrad, all right. That's what's up, man. Conrad, undeniably, is probably one of the top 25 New York City basketball street legends played above the rim, man. All of his highlight footage is him dunking on people, man, which is absolutely fascinating. Conrad didn't play any professional minutes here. He primarily played overseas. He was a star in Europe, a two-time Eurostar player, uh, FIFA championships, uh, championships with Turkey. He played in Paris, took Italy to the finals. I got friends overseas that grew up in Europe, especially in Paris, that all look at Conrad like he was their dude, like he was their version of Jordan growing up. Tragically, Conrad died at the Orlando Magic training camp in Irvine, California. I look at graffiti like basketball in a very strange way. Um, countless local kids will pick up a ball or maybe a marker Maybe a handful of kids will actually stick with it. A um, smaller handful of kids will actually get good. And a smaller community of guys will actually be recognized widely for their talents. And Conrad was that dude. There's a uh, summer league here that bears his name. It's a youth tournament that goes on every summer. And every year they do a uh, Conrad McRae Family Day. And a lot of his former play, uh, teammates from Syracuse come out. It's kind of remarkable that he made his bones here almost 30 years ago as a kid shooting free throws and playing pickup games here. And now he has a park that bears his name and there's a generation of young kids aspiring to be just like Conrad. The work that I do and like put them out in the physical realm is for, you know, just to have like interactions and inspire other people. And a lot of that is like, you know, just picking up a ball and going to play basketball or whatever and just saying what's up to someone. That skill is something like I'm really the most important skill I have, more so than taking a, like a beautiful picture. You guys were saying that in Boston, it seems like it's easy for someone to go to the playground and go play basketball. That shit doesn't really exist here. And if it does, a lot of the basketball hoops outdoors, the city actually takes the rims off the backboard. So they make sure that no one's congregating at like a place because it's just a liability issue or they just don't want people getting together which is really fucked up people have to make their own spaces and guys like k who builds all the basketball hoops out of trash cans he's been in the neighborhood forever and you know the city don't do shit for anybody so they're gonna he has to do it for himself the only way that people can get together is if they make make it happen to get together you know it's not, it's not given to you here as much as it is other places. Yo, I actually just found a bunch of pictures from that of all three of y'all. You look like kids. When I look back at the photographs, especially with food dreams, you know, the one important aspect about it is human resiliency. The significance of that photograph is that I lived up the block from them and it's a scene that I would see every single day. I just saw a group of kids that are like, obviously their parents cared about them to build that 
hoop to watch over them and to teach them how to shoot and just, you know, how to play with each other. If you teach these kids how to do, you know, tell these stories themselves, I don't have to be doing that anymore. And if I can teach them to do that, that's way more fulfilling. A lot of it is about like trying to inspire kids to be creative and taking things into their own hands and being resilient. When I first came in 96, like seeing the main court was all like seven footers and Keith Kloss and Sick With It. And like all the legends used to really play playground basketball. So that was my first connection to Venice. Like seeing like, wow, like this is this actually a goal for me, like to play on this main court. Like, I mean, forget about the NBA, forget about any other court. Like this is. This is NBA right here. This is the NBA players are playing on this court. Like, I want a piece of that. I remember coming down, I was with my parents and they were like, oh, your son can't go to Venice. He's gonna get shot. This is not like a neighborhood to hang out. And I barely spoke English to be honest. So I was like, what are you guys talking about? This is basketball courts there and everybody's playing. This is where I gotta be. I spent a whole week there, really not really knowing any English. Just that was kind of my re reconnection to the state. My focus was on the game and, and moving up courts. The goal was to get on the first court, and by the end of the summer, I moved up to the main court. So the VBL began as like a summer tournament. In 2003, I launched a, a website called BallInLA.com. It was kind of a guide to basketball in LA. It was pretty chaotic at first, but the, the competition was crazy from the go. And everybody come together, seeing the stands packed, like, you know, playing in front of a thousand people. And so next summer, I went back to the city. I said, you know, we need, we want to do a league. You know, a lot, of, a lot of the players call it the platform, you know, like just because it's it's somewhere to showcase your skills. So not only we bring athletes, but halftime, we bring different entertainers to showcase their skills and talent. This community that was just a skins and shirts league grew into Meta World Peace owning a team and Nick Young owning a team. And people are really taking pride in, in playing in the league and looking forward to it, right? That it's a summer league. Like I see a few people posted today, like, you know, missing VBL or I can't wait till summer. And it's, I think it's something for, for us and the people playing, that's, that's, our, that's our NBA. The only, the only reason why I really started the league is like, there's too much punk basketball and you know, you sometimes you need to put a little bit of structure to the chaos. I think that's why I, I, I love the VBL because it just, it keeps my game on point. That's, that's the level where, where, what we need to head towards, you know, like just keep elevating, keep getting better. I compete. Anybody can be beat. Understand? Let's go, let's go. Let's go. Hard work on three. One, two, three. Hard work. An all star is who someone plays the, plays consistently every game, has good offense, has their players involved. Someone who just moves forward, moves positively. And instead of taking, just taking from the neighborhood, they're giving back. A guy that's uh, obviously super talented in basketball, uh, but still remembers where he came from and represents his borough or his city or his state, wherever he goes. A neighborhood all-star to me is, 
is someone that's dedicated to the game, that loves the craft, that will play anywhere, any day, any situation. It's somebody that's gonna respect the game, it's somebody that's gonna bring people together, and somebody that's gonna play with some flair. People who actually invest their time and their knowledge and their wisdom into kids. Someone like Kerry, franchise barbershop in, in St. Louis, Missouri. When the park was crummy, he was a guy who was still bringing people to that space. I think neighborhood all-stars are defined by the stories that are shared amongst fans, amongst the community. It helps their legend grow.